Okay, <clears throat> this is um, Wild Herbs of Australia and New Zealand by Tim Lowe, that's L-O-W. It's quite a good book on Australian her uh, herbs, wild plants. And um, yes, that's one book I'm going to just read from. And the other is, I've got this dreadful microphone because my headset isn't working. The other is Wild Food in Australia by A, B and J, W, Cribb. That's double B. That's a very good book, actually. They're experienced, you know, for years. They've had ex years of experience out in the bush and everything. Now, I'm going to talk about lantana and whether they're edible or not. Th these, both these books talk about um, lantana camera or camara, C-A-M-A-R-A. -A. Yes, lantana camara. Here it is. Now, we just want to read the, about whether they're poison or not. The fruits are shiny black. Round, this is Lantana Camara. The fruits are shiny black, round to ellipsoid, about five millimeters across. They are born in a cluster at the end of the flowering stalk, from which they fall at a touch when quite ripe. The soft black pulp surrounding the stone has a distinctive and pleasant flavor, and although each fruit yields a small quantity, it is usually possible to gather large numbers of fruits. Although some people believe the fruits to be poisonous, one of us has eaten them since early childhood without ill effect. There are certainly reports of children being made ill by eating lantana fruits, but probably unripe fruits were involved in these cases. Distribution Queensland and New South Wales. Now that's lantana kumara. Are there more than one sort of lantana? I know that in landscaping you see little prostrate versions. Uh, prostate? No, prostrate, yes. Prostrate blue ones and white ones and mauve ones. I don't know if there's more than one type of lantana. But that's the type that I've eaten anyway, lantana camara. And let's quote from this book by uh, Tim Lowe. Just the bit on eating them. The small black, black fruits of lantana have a distinctive sweet flavour. These fruits are objects of some controversy, as many lay people believe them to be poisonous. The, fruit, the weight of evidence strongly suggests the ripe fruits are safe to eat, and that all the records of poisoning relate to children eating green unripe fruits. The coarse leaves of lantana have been used as sandpaper for polishing fine-grained woods. In China, the stems were once fashioned into toothbrushes. Well, they are very fibrous, aren't they? Well, um, for a start, you know, you're not going to be able to collect a lot of lantana berries because, well, I mean, you've got the birds to contend with, haven't you? They're going to be, I mean, you know, birds like lantanas. And I'll make a link to uh, a lovely YouTube video of some sort of monkey eating lantana berries. Yes, and um, that's another thing. I mean, lantana berries aren't the, <laughs> aren't the most <laughs> delicious of berries. I mean, they're bland. I don't know if you could call them insipid, but they don't have the tang like a, a black currant does, or a blackberry does, or a blueberry does. They don't have that sting, so you only eat the right ones, of course. You don't eat the green ones, but for, for starters, you're not going to collect too many because of the birds taking them. And yes, you know, they're not that, del they're not that delicious. Anyway, I've eaten them. This girl and I used to go to the beach at Lady Bay in Sydney and all along South Head they used to have some wild ones and <laughs> we'd pick them. I've even seen them growing in the drain at Rushcutters Bay. <laughs> Rushcutters Bay we used to <laughs> we used to pick them the black ones and well, they were they were fun to eat. It was fun to think we were eating wild food but you you know you'd have to eat a lot. You'd have to collect a lot of them to you know, the taste isn't thrilling, but you could make them into jams or uh, <laughs> or muffins or something, you know, as long as you gave them a bit of sugar, and you might be able to spike them up with a bit of lemon juice. And I really don't know if there's more than one type of lantana. There probably are, you know, related lantanas, but that's the wild one with the pretty multicolored flowers. It was introduced in this to Australia from South America. Men used to give uh, lantanas in pots to their girlfriends, you know, in the old days, and um, yes, it's all up and down around the Australian coast. It doesn't grow out here where I <laughs> where, where I am. It's just too hot and <laughs> hot and dry out here. Nothing, <laughs> nothing grows out here where I <laughs> where I am. It's just <laughs> it's just too hot, hot and dry. A lantana wouldn't last ten minutes. 
I think my battery is, yes, this battery is about to run down and this microphone is terrible. I moved the transformer away because it was making it hum, but, uh, you know, this is the best <laughs> I can do, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Wild Herbs of Australia and New Zealand by Tim Lowe. That's quite a good book about eating wild foods and weeds. You, you know, city slickers, there are a lot of, uh, you know, even if you're in America or England or Europe, wherever you are, on, on the planet, there's lots of weeds that can be eaten and that you can supplement your diet with. We should, uh, as Ishmael says, unlock. The, we should be unlocking the food. And Wild Food in Australia by A.B. and J.W. Cribb. That's a good book. And it has all the weeds in it too. There's quite a few. You know, this book is probably 30 years old by now. And uh, yes, there's a lot more books have come out since then. i better go now. See ya.